Hello everyone, my name is Serena Teneja and I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. Today I'll be talking about the five iPad apps that I use almost every single day. So first things first, this is an iPad Pro uh, with an 11 inch screen and it's currently sitting on the Apple keyboard. I also bought the Apple Pencil to go with it. The iPad Pro is the most expensive models out of the iPad options available. And from what I understand, for day-to-day -day use of note-taking, drawing illustrations, watching videos, you really don't need the iPad Pro for all of those tasks. So unless you're a professional illustrator or video editor or something, the other models are more than enough. However, this is not actually my iPad, it's my dad's from work and he kindly lets me use it. But when and if I have to give it back, I'll definitely be investing in one of my own albeit one of the cheaper models probably, because of how much I use it and how much joy it gives me in my day-to-day -day life. The first app is Notion. It's very hard to explain Notion to someone who's not used it before, but basically it's sort of like a personal database where you can store simple things like to-do lists and Word documents, see how progress and projects are coming along, you can also use it as an area for curations, also make models to manage your workflow. I don't think I'm doing a very good job of explaining it, so I'll just show you a few ways in which I use it. Okay, so if we just open it up, it's over here, Notion, and it opens up onto this week planner, which is divided to-do lists up by month and also by day of the week. Um, as you can see, I don't really use this. I much prefer having to-do lists on paper where I can visually see in front of me what I need to do and physically cross it off. But I thought this was a good one to show because although it looks complicated, you don't have to learn how to use Notion straight away. You can import lots of pre-made templates from the internet straight into your Notion and start using it like that while you get to grips with how to build your own pages. In terms of the pages that I do use Notion for, you can see them down the side here. And if I take you to Brain 2.0, this is an example of another template that I imported online. Now this is a different setup, it's more of a table. Now Brain 2.0 follows the concept that our brains are not designed to store things, they are just able to have ideas. Recently I've started making notes on the things I consume, such as books, podcasts and documentaries, otherwise I find that it just goes in one ear and comes out the other. It's really interesting to go back to these notes later and see what I learnt from it and what I was feeling at the time, and it really helps to just connect thoughts and solidify things in your mind by having it all in one place and not worrying about trying to remember it all in your head. So just to briefly talk you through this table, this is the name of the piece of content and then I've got a column for content type, so documentary, fiction book, non-fiction book, podcast. Then this is a really useful part of it called tags, where I just tag kind of the topics that come up within these things, so environment, life advice, philosophy, happiness for example. And then there's other columns about when I finished it, how I found it, and whether I've done the notes and where in the progress they are. This whole template uh, and the concept of a second brain is something I learned from Ali Abdel, so go check him out if you want to know more. I will link the template in the description below as well. One last way I wanted to show you how I use Notion is in terms of project management. So if we click on YouTube Factory, this is basically where I have my ideas for YouTube videos and then see how far along the production line they are in terms of filming, editing and publishing. This is, I think, a Kanban board. I think that's how you say it. But essentially it offers a visual representation of how far along the pipeline your projects are. So um, when it comes to YouTube, I've got ideas here. For example, this app's video is an idea. And then once it's filmed, I'll drag it into the filmed column then into the edited column and so on and so forth until it's published. This is really, really useful to visualize how your projects are coming along and what needs to be done. And when you click on the projects, you can see all the notes I've made and the script, which is really helpful because everything is then in one place and a lot easier to manage. I could literally talk about Notion all day, but I'm gonna stop there. I can make a full video showing you how I use it and other ways you can use it if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about some of the note-taking apps I use. And note-taking is the reason I actually started using the iPad in the first place. And we'll put the Apple Pencil to test as well because so far it's just been a very expensive and glorified stylus. So let's see how it's actually used. I used two apps for note-taking and they were Notability and Good Notes. We'll look at Good Notes first. 
So this is where most of my revision notes are stored for the surgical exam I sat earlier last year. And obviously there's lots of anatomy involved in surgery. So I've got all my notebooks here. Uh, if we click on the abdomen, for example, you can see here the blood supply to the stomach, the esophagus and the rectum and the anal canal, lovely. I've always loved drawing and visualizing things for revision ever since I was in school. And anatomy obviously lends itself so well to colors and labels and using the GoodNotes app to create all of those images was an absolute joy. In terms of how I use it, so I usually use dotted paper and then you can zoom in, you can draw in different levels of thickness, um, you can use obviously lots of colours and there's also the option to highlight things which I sometimes use either to highlight words or to colour things in. The best thing is, even if you can't draw, you can use this app to make some absolutely beautiful notes. So what I sometimes do is I open up um, Google right next to it and I just search for what I want to draw, so aortic branches. Oh, didn't spell that right but hopefully it comes up. Yep, there's a nice one. Having these windows side by side, it's just so easy to literally drag and drop the image you want. Go back to good notes. Oh. And I sometimes just trace around what I want to draw. Now that was obviously super quick. The colors aren't even between the lines. Absolutely shocking. But I just wanted to quickly show how easy it is to um, move things around so you can move them around easily you can resize them and basically just make some really pretty notes quite easily in quite an enjoyable way next up is another note taking app called notability and i use that for slightly different reasons so notability is just over here and you can see i've actually got quite a lot of documents here rather than my own notes you can still make your own freehand notes like in good notes i think there's a few differences in terms of how everything's laid out and how you use everything but general concepts are the same um, but for whatever reason i found good notes a lot more enjoyable to use for drawings so i didn't end up using notability that much however what it's really good for is storing documents you already have and it's got much better organization capabilities um, by these tabs on the side here and even within the tabs you can have sub tabs this makes me liken notability to more of a ring binder where i'm storing documents that i'm given or that i want to refer to and goodnotes is more similar to the notebooks i had where i made my own notes so it's quite easy to obviously open these up and read them but the best thing is you can also annotate really easily um, anything that you're reading you can write little things that you want to remember so i'm just going to write remember so yeah it's just a nice way to blend reading and making notes in one place something i really like using notability for so if i go into the rcs bulletins here and i want to read um, an article in one of the bulletins like i already explained i can annotate and highlight things i find interesting but with the split screen function i can also have notion up on the side and if I go into Brain 2.0, I think I've already made notes on this one. So yep, women in surgery. And with the keyboard open, um, I can just have this on this side and my notes on the other side and just type away anything I'm finding interesting. And it's just so easy to use, easy to switch between the two programs. It's just a really enjoyable process. I don't know how to explain it. It's just such a nice blend of different technology in terms of typing, reading and writing. And it just helps me consume content, be that for just general interest or academically for revision in a much more engaging way. Anything that can trick your brain into thinking you're having fun when you're actually doing some reasonably useful work is always a win in my books. As well as making notes, the iPad and the Apple Pencil are great for doing some illustrations. A popular app that I think a lot of people use, professional illustrators and digital artists, is called Procreate. I haven't invested in that yet because you do have to pay. And in the meantime, I found a free alternative called Sketchbook. Okay, so let's go into Sketchbook. Here it is. This is a canvas that's already sized to the size of a YouTube thumbnail. Um, you can see there's lots of different tools here. So we've got a pencil, um, highlighter, there's also a ballpoint pen, fountain pen, paintbrush, uh, you know, there's lots of different tools. So I'll just open up a new sketch to show you how I use it. So um, if I just paste an image I've already copied, 
This is a picture from one of the thumbnails that I used um, about how to spice up your interview answers. I think this idea was inspired at the time from that meme um, about that guy who sprinkled salt on things um, and it literally went viral. So um, I was trying to recreate that in this thumbnail about spicing or salting or whatever um, your interview answers. It doesn't really make sense to me now, but it's what I was thinking at the time, so I had to go with it. So something I often do to my thumbnails, which you probably never notice but might notice now, is um, just drawing these simple white lines, like I said, just to make the thumbnail a little bit more eye-catching. And for this one, I also wanted to draw the salt that I am supposedly sprinkling. So just add those on there. <laughs> That's really, really bad. But that's just another quick example to show you how I like using my iPad. Now, the last app I want to talk to you about that really enhances my life is called Instapaper. It's not another social media app that we all need to jump on. One of the things that I'm trying to do a bit more, which you may have picked up on in this video, is to consume content a bit more intentionally. We are bombarded with information from absolutely everywhere, 24 hours a day, be that from different social media platforms or constant news updates. And I find sometimes I just end up drowning and wasting hours and hours of my day just scrolling, but not really getting very much out of it. Now, amongst all the mindless scrolling, sometimes you come across really interesting tweets or an interesting article that someone has shared, but you're not really in the mind frame to read it there and then. I'm usually scrolling at nighttime in bed or on the toilet, like most of us do, I'm sure, but I'm not really in the mind frame to consume things that are going to make me think and that I have to spend some time reading. In the past, I used to, you know, screenshot the articles or copy them into my browser and just tell myself I would read them later, but it gets buried and I forget about it and I never actually end up reading it. So what Instapaper does is when you're browsing and you come across something you think might be interesting and you might want to come back to read later, if you have Instapaper downloaded, it will give you a little add-on which you can have on your browser and your phone and you just click add to Instapaper and Instapaper is one place for all of those things to be stored so you can go back to them when you're feeling more up to it. So just a quick look at my Instapaper. So as you can see, these are, like I said, tweets, articles that I've come across while scrolling that I didn't want to read at the time, so I just saved them here. And now they're all here for me to read whenever I wish. The reason I love using this app on my iPad specifically is because usually the things I'm browsing are on my phone. It's quite a small screen. So I save it to Instapaper then and there. But then I love revisiting it on my iPad where the screen's a lot bigger. It's a lot easier to read and digest. Plus with the split screen function, usually with Notion on the other side, it's only too easy to make notes side by side if you wish. Okay, so that's everything. Hope you found that useful and see you next time.